Yo, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're keeping good. In this video, we're going to be going through all of the tuning settings, explaining what everything actually means, how it affects the car, and also what happens when you increase or decrease each setting, and what happens if you put it at the highest or the lowest amount. So hopefully by the end of this, you'll understand how everything works when tuning a car, whether it's for racing, drifting, or drag. And yeah, I tried to make the guide so it's easy for people to understand even if you've never tried tuning anything before, but also still interesting for pro tuners, so no matter what level you are, you should still be able to learn a lot from this guide. And it's taken quite a few weeks to make this video, a lot of research on real life tuning, uh, reading and watching all the guides from real life pros, as well as talking to loads of people on everything from the CarX groups to like Driftworks forums. So yeah, hope this helps you out. If it does, be sure to like the video and consider subscribing to see more videos like this on the channel. Right, enough waffling on, time to get into it. So first off, you want to make sure that you have the ultimate upgrade or the ultimate mod. This basically means all of the tuning is unlocked and in the dyno stand you have access to all of the tuning uh, settings and options. So make sure you do that first. So we start off with spring length. So this is basically the length or the travel of the suspension springs and this will also adjust the car's ride height. So increasing it means more suspension length or travel, raising the ride height and more progression to the suspension which basically just means the springs are longer so it takes longer to be pressed down, a longer progression. Uh, maxing this out means a very high ride height, it's going to be like a monster truck, um, you're going to have very long travel springs with a slow progression like the springs will kind of feel light and soft. And then if you decrease the setting, you're gonna be basically giving yourself shorter springs, a lower ride height, and quicker progression springs. So they'll kind of feel like they're a bit more stiff. And if you take it to the minimum, it's gonna be a very low ride height. The car may be like scraping the floor, uh, the wheels might hit the arch, and the springs are gonna kind of feel shorter and stiffer. And now we go on to spring stiffness. So this is how strong or stiff the springs are. Uh, this also affects ride height slightly as stiffer springs mean more weight is needed to push them down. So say you had your car at like perfect fitment, you make the springs stiffer, obviously you need more weight to push those springs down now, so your car is not gonna be at perfect fitment, it's gonna go up a tiny little bit in ride height. Right, so increasing this is gonna mean a stiffer feeling suspension, it's going to react quicker, and it's gonna be more harsh. If you max it out, you're going to have a very stiff ride, like the suspension won't be able to compress much, and it's going to react really suddenly to bumps in the road and stuff like that, almost like having a solid suspension. If you reduce the setting, you're going to have softer, more kind of spongy and light suspension. It's going to be less reactive and it's going to react slower. If you set it to the minimum setting, it's going to be like the suspension's almost not working properly, like the springs won't be strong enough to even resist the car's weight properly so it's going to be like the suspension's sitting really low, uh, it's weak and it's bottoming out quite a lot. So with all of these settings it's going to be about finding a nice balance, it's just finding what suits uh, your car, how you're setting that car up and your drifting or driving style so it's all about you know sacrifices and you know things that will get better when you change a setting but some things will get worse so it's like it's all about finding a nice balance. Now before going on to the shock settings I'm just going to quickly go over what a shock is and how it works with the suspension. So the shock absorbers or the dampers or the shocks whatever you want to call them are fitted inside of your suspension spring and similar to the springs the dampers add resistance you know to kind of soak up forces and bumps from the car on the road. So for hitting bumps, um, jumps and dips and braking, accelerating, all that sort of stuff. But whereas springs are bouncy, the shocks or the dampers are the opposite of bouncy. Like if you only had the springs in the suspension and no shocks, then when you hit a bump in the road the car would kind of bounce around and wobble for like 10 seconds like jelly. Um, the shocks basically soak up and resist uh, those kind of forces, making the ride more smooth. The shock's not only there to stop the bounciness, but it's also to add resistance. So it's a huge part of the suspension. You know, the car suspension is the spring and the damper working together to absorb bumps in the road, you know, impacts from jumps, or even just steering and braking and stuff like that. So it all makes the ride more smooth, smooth, uh, balanced, and helps maintain grip. 
Also, to make the next bit a bit more clear, um, the bump of a damper refers to the compression, so when it's pressed down, and the rebound is the opposite basically, decompression, so when the damper pushes back to its original position. Hope that quickly explains it. Right, now let's get into it. Okay, so damper fast bump. So this is like the resistance and therefore the speed of the damper compression in regards to quick impacts, so fast bumps. So this setting is used to absorb fast bumps like potholes, curbs, uh, bumps in the road and things that give a quick hit to the suspension. More is going to mean stiffer the resistance and the slower that the dampers will compress on a fast bump. If you max it out, it's going to be too slow and stiff like the suspension won't be able to compress uh, quickly enough so you'll feel bumps really hard when driving as the damper won't be able to absorb the shock that quick so it'll feel like a solid damper and you'll feel like a hit or a jolt when hitting bumps and stuff in the road. If you reduce the setting it's going to be the opposite so a faster and weaker resistance of the damper on fast bump compression. If you set this to the minimum it's going to be too fast and the dampers are going to be too weak so they're going to compress fully and quickly on fast bumps and almost act like the dampers aren't working so again you'll feel a hit through the car on fast bumps okay hope you're still with me now we go on to the damper fast rebound so this is like the opposite of what we just did it's the rebound or the decompression of the damper and again, this is only in regards to fast movement, so a fast decompression. So like the dampers being pushed back and decompressed by the springs. So basically, when you hit a fast bump and the spring and the damper gets pushed down and compressed, that's obviously going to push back and give a fast rebound. This setting here controls the damping and speed of that fast rebound. So the more you uh, increase the setting is going to mean slower and more resistance to the fast rebound of the suspension. If you max it out, it's going to mean the fast rebound damping will be too resistant and slow, meaning if you hit a bump, the suspension will take a long time to recover and rebound back to its original position. If you hit multiple bumps quickly in a row, the suspension, you know, is going to get sort of lower and lower each time and not recover and it could bottom out. If you reduce the setting, then it means the faster and less resistance there will be to the fast rebound. And if you set this to the minimum, the damping resistance will be too fast and too weak for the fast rebound. This means that after hitting a fast bump, the suspension will instantly fast rebound and make the suspension quite bouncy because the damper won't be resisting or slowing down the fast rebound it will just kind of let the suspension spring back and just do its thing and it will make the car kind of quite bouncy. Okay, hope this is making sense and don't worry, the dampers are probably the longest and most kind of awkward thing to explain. Everything else is much quicker and more simple so make sure you stick around to the end of the video. Okay, so next we have the damper bump. So this should be called the damper slow bump or slow compression just to make it more um, simple and makes sense. Um, so this is the resistance and the speed of the dampers in regards to just general or slow compression. So call this the slow bump and the slow rebound, this setting and the next setting. So damper slow compression is going to be caused by like steering, acceleration, changes in track elevation, so going up or down a slope. And so this setting is controlling the resistance and therefore the speed of the dampers for slow suspension compression. So the more you add is going to mean the more resistance and the slower the damper is going to work for slow suspension compression. If you max this out, the dampers are going to be resisting too much, making it uh, too stiff and slow and not giving it enough time to compress effectively, limiting how good the suspension can work. If you lower this setting, the dampers are going to move faster and have less resistance to the slow suspension compression. If you set this to the minimum, then the damper's resistance will be too weak and fast, meaning, meaning the suspension's slow compression won't have much holding it back other than the spring. Like the shock will basically feel like it's not working, which means the suspension won't be very smooth and also this would cause issue, issues for the slow rebound. Okay, so now we have the damper slow rebound. 
Again, this is the speed and resistance of the dampers, but for slow rebound or slow suspension decompression, whatever you want to call it. Um, so adding more means more resistance and slower dampers, meaning the suspension takes longer to rebound to a settled position. If you max out, you're going to have too much resistance and a too slow of an overall rebound, so you're going to have a slow, slow rebound. Uh, so for example, after steering or changing track elevation, something like that, the suspension will take too long to go back to a settled position, and this is going to make the car unstable. If you decrease the setting, you're going to have less resistance and faster overall rebound of the suspension. And if you set this to the minimum, there's going to be too little resistance and too fast of an overall suspension rebound, a slow suspension rebound. Um, meaning you're going to have an instant and aggressive rebound that could make the car quite bouncy and wobbly when rebounding from steering or elevation changes and things like that. Right, okay, finally we got that long bit out of the way. Now we move on to toe adjustment. So this points the front side of the wheels in or out when looking from above. So here's toe out, here's toe in, and also here is a neutral or zero toe, which means the wheels are just perfectly straight. So increasing this means a positive inward pointing toe. This gives you more stability driving straight, but it makes it harder to start turning or go side to side. If you set this to the max, full positive, for the front, it will make steering very slow to start, but lots of straight line stability. For the rear, full positive would give a very grippy direct acceleration, but it would be too much force on the car's drivetrain. Like the wheels would be pushing in, and all that force pushing in would start to wear away and break parts of the drivetrain. Not in the game, but in real life. So I guess it's something you wouldn't do in real life, so you probably shouldn't do it in the game either. So decreasing the setting, making it less than zero, is going to mean a negative outward pointing toe. It's going to make steering more easy to start off, but it's going to make the car more unstable when driving straight. If you set it to the minimum, full negative toe. For the front, you're going to have quite snappy steering at the start of a turn, like reduced understeer, but it's going to be a bit more unstable on the straights. Like it won't want to stay driving straight, you're going to have to kind of correct it because it's going to be slightly sort of tracking and drifting to the left and right. For the rear, full negative toe will make your car spin out quite easily when drifting, so best to avoid it. And also, one thing to add is that adjusting the toe in or out for the front or rear is going to slightly increase the tyre contact patch, giving you a little bit more grip. For drift tuning, you probably want the front to be slightly toe out, but the rear to be slightly toe in. If you want to know why, and you want to know more about drift tuning, then make sure to subscribe to see the next video, which will be a follow-up to this video, but we'll be explaining how to drift tune all these settings the best way for different cars, uh, different setups, and different styles of drifting. So rather than just saying the basics of what all the settings mean, which is more what this video is talking about, the next video is going to be like how to use all this info for drift tuning your car, for you know whatever car you want, whatever setup, whether it's like a street or a pro comp, drift uh, setup and your specific style of drifting and you know basically how to tune any drift car perfectly to how you want it i didn't want to try and add all of that on top of this video because it would just be too much so subscribe to check out that video coming soon okay so now we move on to a popular one this one is camber so most people know what this is this points the top side of the wheels in or out and it's used to help keep the tires flat when you need it, so when you're steering or drifting or cornering hard, um, and it affects stability when driving and cornering. So the more you add means positive camber. This would give you a bit more straight line stability and make it more stable on uneven surfaces, but positive camber is normally used on things like tractors and farming vehicles. They're rarely used on race or drift cars. If you were to max this out, so max positive camber, it would help if you were driving, you know, a tractor over some mud, but it wouldn't be much use on a racing or drifting car. If you decrease the setting though, it's going to give you negative camber, which means more stability in corners and drifting, but a little bit less when going straight. So with negative camber, the wheels are angled when going straight, but they almost get pushed flat when turning and drifting, uh, giving you more grip and stability. If you set it to the minimum, 
means max negative camber. It might look cool for, you know, stance cars and stuff like that, but it's not going to be great for drifting. It's just going to be too much. Basically, you're going to lose a lot of tire grip, uh, the feeling of the car, the road, uh, and self-steering won't work as well as it should do if you're using a steering wheel with force feedback. So next we have the anti-roll bars. So the anti-roll bars, sometimes called the sway bars, what they do is adjust the body roll of the car and it also affects grip and stability. So more means stiffer bars, meaning less car body roll. But when cornering hard, it's more likely to become unstable or lose grip. If you set it to the max, you're going to have very stiff anti-roll bars, almost solid and not allowing for flex or body roll. This might make the car unstable through corners or it might even make the car go up on three wheels while cornering. If you reduce this setting, you're going to have softer anti-roll bars, more uh, car body roll and be slightly more stable while cornering. But if you set it to the minimum, you're going to have very soft anti-roll bars, almost like they aren't there or they're not working. The car would be a lot more free to roll around and uh, it, it might be too much though, so it might make the car handling a bit less responsive. So next we have the caster angle. So this adjusts how far forward or backwards the steering axis is from vertical. This causes a dynamic camber angle change as you turn through the steering lock. So the wheel camber will change more. And it also affects counter steer and self straightening if you're using a steering wheel. More is gonna mean more positive camber gain on the lead wheel and more negative camber gain on the trailing wheel as you go up to full steering lock, so as you steer through from like zero steering to 100% steering. And as you can see here, the game shows you what the wheels will look like when they're at full steering lock. Also, more positive caster means stronger self steering. Self steering means when you're drifting on a force feedback wheel and the wheel counter steers itself to start a drift, or also when it self right steers the car coming out of a drift. If you max this setting out, you're going to have a lot of dynamic camber change. That will mean you'll lose grip at full steering lock as you'll be on a lot of camber and the self steering will be very strong and might cause the steering wheel that you use to wobble left and right at times. If you reduce this setting, you're going to have less dynamic camber change, meaning self steering will become more weak. If you set it to the minimum or zero caster is going to mean no dynamic camber change as you steer with limited self steering and steering correction from the car. Now Ackerman angle, so adjusting this makes the inside wheel turn sharper than the other the more you turn. It's used to adjust tire drag and tire slip when cornering and drifting. The more you have means the more aligned the wheels are when turning or drifting at full steering lock, so the more they're pointing the same way. This helps with drifting big angles but also means you get tire drag when steering or drifting low angles. If you put this to the max, it means when you're at full steering lock, both front wheels are straight, pointing the same way and aligned. So no tire drag when drifting at full lock, but when you're drifting or steering at low angle, one of the wheels will be dragging a bit, slowing you down. If you decrease the setting, it's the opposite basically. So the more the wheels are aligned when starting to turn, but the less they are aligned at full steering lock. If you set it to the minimum, then when at full steering lock, the wheels won't be aligned and pointing the same way. And when drifting, one wheel's gonna drag and slow you down a bit and kind of bring you out of a drift. But when you're drifting or steering at low uh, steering angle, the wheels won't have much drag. So the next one's quite easy, it's steering angle. So it's just the maximum steering angle that the car will go up to. So more means you can steer more and hold a bigger drift angle without spinning out. Max sets it to the highest max steering angle. Best for drifting as you can hold more angle without spinning. Uh, less obviously you know, limits the maximum steering you can have. If you set it to the minimum, obviously it's gonna be the least amount of max steering angle that the game lets you set. But for this, just always put it to max steering angle. It's the best for drifting and there's no real reason not to. So next we have the rims diameter. So basically wheel size, wheel diameter. More means a bigger sized wheel and this will slightly affect the feel of the overall gearing of the car. Not very much, but it will make a little bit of a difference. So 
basically bigger wheels mean it takes longer to get to max speed and max speed is higher but you know it kind of slows you down so it will feel like a lower and longer overall gearing or you know final drive gear ratio if you set it to the max you know obviously you're going to have like huge crazy donk wheels uh, you're also going to have a slow car with low torque and power but it will also have a high top speed so again it's going to feel like the final drive gear the overall gearing is longer and slower with bigger wheels if you decrease this so smaller sized wheels it's just the opposite so it slightly affects the feel of overall gearing again but the opposite way so it will make the car accelerate a bit faster but have a lower top speed so with smaller wheels it will feel like shortening the final drive gear ratio the overall gearing if you set it to the minimum obviously you're going to have ridiculous like toy car wheels and the gear ratio will feel really short uh, the wheels are also going to spin up too easily meaning you don't have much grip and next we have tire width so this changes the width of the tire and the wheel more means a wider tire and wheel giving you more grip max is going to mean like you know crazy wide tires the sort of thing you'd use for a drag car uh, way too much grip for drifting um, if you make this less obviously thinner tires and wheels less grip if you set it to the minimum you're going to have you know really thin tires with very little grip almost like driving on like a spare wheel then we have tire pressure so this is how much air pressure is in the tires how much how much they're filled with air basically so more means more air pressure means harder tires less grip max is going to mean very hard tires with low grip so less is going to mean less air pressure and more grip and you're going to get a little bit more feeling out of the tire like a feeling from the road setting it to the minimum means you're going to have very low tire pressure giving you like saggy and soft tires that grip well while driving slow but aren't very good at high speed so wheel adhesion is basically what type of tires you're going to be using and the game actually shows you the different type of tires so 90 adhesion as you can see is like worn tires so tires that have already been used and worn down and have low grip 100 is like your standard street tire that most cars would use and drift on 110 is similar to 100 it's the same style of tire you know same amount of tread but it's just a more grippy rubber and 120 is as you can see like a racing semi slick tire hasn't got much tread and very grippy so what most people would drift on in real life is 100 your normal street tires most people wouldn't be able to afford to buy performance tires basically 110s and nobody really drifts on 120s in real life which is you know racing semi slicks in real life so yeah but obviously use whatever feels best for you so next we have wheel track sometimes called track width so wheel track is how wide or far out your wheels are from the car so more is going to add more stability to the car's handling but if you max it out you're going to make the car go from almost like a long wheel based car to a square wheel based car because you're pushing the wheels so far out and it's going to make the car spin out easier if you do that less is going to mean the wheels move closer into the car it's not really going to provide much benefit and if you set it to the minimum like your wheels are going to be like inside of the car they're going to be <laughs> it's going to like glitch out basically so you don't want to do that and next up we've got tire profile so this is basically how thick the tires are so more means a thicker tire you're going to get a little bit more feedback from the road but if you max it out you're going to have very thick tires almost like drag tires the feedback from the road is going to be kind of very spongy and soft less is going to mean a thinner tire giving you more quick and harsh feedback from the road and minimum is going to mean very thin tires and it will almost give the car a kind of stiff and harsh ride almost like a race car so next up we have engine tuning engine tune up so this basically just upgrades the whole engine so more power top speed and acceleration more obviously increases this is going to give you more overall power just a better engine overall uh, max is going to upgrade it to the max less is going to be you know less power a less you know better engine and minimum is the lowest engine you know performance you can set it to so max torque this is basically how much force or power the engine has at any moment so more means the engine has more power and strength to build up speed faster if you max out you know you're going to have the most engine force available to power the car forward at any time 
If you lower this, then you have less engine force or strength. And if you set it to the minimum, you're gonna have you know, the least amount of engine force and strength that you can have. So it might take a while to build up speed, even with a high horsepower car, because the engine is lacking in you know, the kind of force. Next, you have the rev limiter. So this is how many revolutions the engine makes at its fastest. So basically how fast the engine can be running at. More means a faster spinning engine, giving the car more power, and you can also spin the wheels more easily. Max is obviously gonna be setting this all the way to the top, means the engine is able to spin up to its maximum you know, engine speed. Less is a limit on the revs or the speed of the engine. And the minimum, obviously, is the minimum setting that you can put to um, you know, limit the max revs that the engine can go to. Next, you've got turbocharger. And this is pretty simple. Do you want a turbocharger on the car or not? Yes, will give you a boost to the engine power and also the car will have a turbo sound. No means, obviously, you're not going to get a power boost that the turbo gives you. And the car also won't have that turbo sound when you're driving it. Next you have turbo air pressure. This is basically how powerful the turbo is. So obviously it only matters if you've got a turbo installed. More is gonna mean a more powerful turbo giving more boost to the engine. Max is gonna mean the max power you can set the turbo to, which is gonna give the engine a big power boost. Less is gonna be less power uh, of the turbo and less of a boost to the engine. Minimum is gonna be the lowest setting of power for the turbo, not giving much added boost to the engine. And now onto the transmission, you have the diff locking ratio, so the differential locking ratio. So this setting is how much difference is allowed in the rear wheels spinning. More means the rear wheels will try to rotate at the same time. It makes the car more drifty and less grippy. Max is what you call a locked differential or a welded differential. It means the wheels will always move with each other and spin at the same time and there will be no slippage or difference. Less is going to mean the wheels are more free to rotate and spin independently of each other. And the minimum means the wheels are completely free to rotate independently from each other and it will make the car more grippy and less drifty. So the final drive, sometimes called the overall gearing of the car, is basically a setting that changes all of the gears at once and it makes them all kind of shorter or all longer. So if you increase this setting, you're going to make the gearing of the car more towards acceleration and short gearing. So if you max it out, the car is going to accelerate really fast and go through all the gears quickly, but you're going to have a low top speed. If you do less, so decrease the setting, it's the opposite. So you're going to make it more speed gearing or a lower and longer gearing. Setting it to the minimum means you're going to have a very high top speed but it's gonna take a long time to sort of accelerate and get through the gears and get up to that top speed. And then next up, you have all of the individual gears as well. So this works the same as the final drive ratio, but instead of tuning all gears at once, you tune each gear individually. So you can make each gear shorter or longer, and you can also make all the gears closer together or more far apart. And now we're finally onto the last section, and we start off with brake torque. So this is adjusting the strength or the force of the brakes. So increasing it means braking force will be stronger and faster, but less controllable. If you max it out, the brakes will be too strong and they might lock up the wheels easily when you're braking, causing you to crash or lose control. If you lower this, then you're reducing the braking force, making it weaker and the brake will work more slowly, but the braking will also be a lot more controllable and smooth. If you set this all the way down, then the brakes are just gonna be like too weak and almost like they're not working, so you won't be able to slow down in time. Now we move on to the brake bias. So this is gonna adjust how the brake force is applied between the front and the rear wheels. So setting it to 50 means all wheels brake with the same force, but if you increase it from 50, it shifts the braking force more towards the front wheels and helps to get more drift angle when braking. But if you set it to the max, it means only the front wheels uh, brakes will work. So your braking won't be very good and it's also more likely to make you spin out easier. If you lower this, then you're making the braking force go more towards the rear of the car and it's gonna straighten the car up a bit more when braking, like if you're drifting, it'll straighten it up. Um, setting it to the minimum means only the rear brakes will work and so your braking will be really bad and you won't be able to slow down properly. 
Next you have ABS. ABS stands for Anti-Lock Braking System. You can set this on or off. On means that the brakes won't lock the wheels out when braking and braking will be better and more efficient. Off means that Anti-Lock Braking Assist is off. So if you brake hard, you'll be able to lock the wheels up. Most drifters have this set as off as you can use brake locking to help with drifting. And then finally, you have launch control, which is basically a speed boost that you get when you start off driving, but it only works when you're doing an XDS tandem challenge online. It doesn't work on anything else. And most people just set it to off. And that's it. Hope that's helped you. If you've got anything to add to this, or even if you have any questions, uh, make sure to drop it in the comments and we'll get back to you and uh, try and help you out. And make sure to check out the next video, which is going to be how to drift tune any car for any setup, like a street drift car or a pro drift car, and for any style of drifting. So this video was just an understanding of how everything works for tuning for not just this game, but this will work on Forza, you know, any game and also in real life. And um, but yeah, check out the next video, which is going to be how to apply all of this knowledge to make any type of drift car for any style of drifting. Thanks for watching if you've made it to the end. Really appreciate if you could like and maybe subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you in the next one. Keep it steady. Peace.